Hello guys, this is Code and Code and this is an introductory video for this course series number theory. So this is an overview of all the algorithms or all the algorithm that we are going to study in this course. So let's start the lecture. So the whole course I have divided into two parts, part one and part two. Part two, in part two, we are going to study algorithms which, uh, which are a bit difficult to study and which require a prerequisite and all the prerequisite i've compiled into part one so first of all we'll be studying about primality test so it is important to study this concept because prime numbers are uh, prime numbers are being used in almost every algorithm including euler's torsion function to lit uh, for mid's little theorem there are many algorithms which require the knowledge of prime numbers so it only makes sense to study about prime numbers and uh, study about primality test so in primality test we would be given a number and we have to tell whether the given number is prime number or not after that we would be studying prime factorization of course you are given a number and you have to find the prime factorization of that number Suppose the given number is 100, so the prime factorization of 100 would be 2 raised to power 2 multiplied by 5 raised to power 2. After that, we would be studying C of Eratosthenes. Uh, I don't actually know what is the actual pronunciation of this, so I will be referring this as sieve only. So we would be studying sieve, and sieve is a way to find out uh, inner range the given number whether the given number is a prime number or not uh, suppose you are given a range you are given q queries and in each query you are given a number and you have to tell whether the given number is prime number or not and you know uh, the range of the query would be up to 10 to the power 6 or 10 to the power 5 you can't go and check again and again whether the given number is prime number or not because the best method to check that is a square root n time method so you can't every time go and check for that you have to generate the list of prime numbers up to 10 to the power 6 and hence you can directly in constant time check whether the given number is prime number or not so see what it does is it generates all the prime number in a given range in n log log n time so we would be studying sieve and then we would be having a look at binary exponentiation which is also basis of matrix exponentiation so binary exponentiation or fast exponentiation is a method in which we are required to calculate uh, which allows us to calculate a raised to power n in log n time suppose you are asked to calculate uh, 23 raised to power 10 to the power 5 that is 23 or 23 raised to power 1 million then if you calculate it linearly then you would see there are 10 to the power 6 multiplications so the uh, time would be running time would be linear if you use of course brute force method but if you use binary exponentiation you can calculate 23 raised to power a million in log n time that is log of a million which is roughly 22 or 20 so it is of course as as the time running uh, running time shows it is a very fast way to calculate powers of a given number so we would be studying binary exponentiation after that we would be studying a uh, euclid algorithm for calculating gcd and then we would be taking a look at goldbatch's uh, goldbatch's conjecture which is a very little concept so it won't take much time and then we would finding the number of devices of n so you are given a number n you have to you have to find the total number of devices of given number n and then we would be studying how to how we can calculate binomial coefficient efficiently there are three four methods by which you can cal calculate binomial coefficient uh, one is a linear time linear in uh, k where you have to calculate nck another one which uses recursion is exponential which requires which utilizes the uh, recursive definition of a binomial coefficient and another one is where we use uh, 
pre-calculate all the factorial and then if you have to calculate NCR modulo some prime number then you can use Fermat's little theorem and then calculate the binomial coefficient if in constant time if you pre-compute all the factorials and after that we would be having a look at segmented sieve so we have already seen there is something called sieve sieve of Eratosthenes which allows us to generate the list of all prime numbers in a given range now a segmented sieve what it does it allows to solve us problem something like this let me show you this problem so you are to implement see what we need we need an array of size n n is the number up to which we need to find prime numbers so usually using c we we take an array of size roughly of 10 is power 6 but now in uh, take a look at this question this question asks you to generate a prime number in a given range in a given range m and n so each time there are q uh, t queries in each query you are given m and n you have to print all the prime numbers in that range for example 1 to 10 you have to print all the prime numbers in the range of 1 to 10 and the prime numbers are 2 3 5 7 of course now n and m can be as large as 10 to the power 9 as you can see so we can't take an array of size 10 to the power 9 so that uh, that is a problem which cannot be solved using sieve now we modify sieve a little bit and then we call it a uh, segmented sieve so you need to look uh, you need to look for a special property you can see here the number of element in the range even though the ranges may range uh, l and r or basically n m n can range from 1 to 10 power 9 but still the number of uh, n m uh, l and r are designed in such a way that the number of elements between the range are not more than 10 power 5 so what we can do is we can uh, apply segmented sieve that is we can take a segment of these numbers and uh, for example we can if the l is like 1000 to 2000 then we can uh, give index 0 we can take index 0 as 1000 index 1 at as 1001 and index 2 as 1002 and so on so uh, that way we can take uh, we can still take an array of 10 to the power 5 and then apply segmented sieve i will tell you how we implement it and then we can apply the normal sieve to solve or to find all the prime numbers in that range so after studying segmented sieve we'll be studying about modulo inverse which is one of the most important concept in modulo arithmetic so this is basically part one now in part two there are concepts which are a little bit tougher than the previous ones so after studying euclidean algorithm we would be going for extended euclidean algorithm extended euclidean algorithm is used to calculate inverse modular inverse as well as to solve Diophantine equation so have a look at this equation so the, uh, the I hope you can see let me use. so the question says from uh, from Euclid it is known that for any positive integer a and b there exists an integer x y such that a x plus b y is equals to d where d is g c d of a and b so the problem is you are given t test cases and in each test case you are given a and b so you can see here we are given a and b there are two test cases in each test cases we are given a and b so we are given a and b we have to find their gcd that is d x and y which satisfy this equation so uh, this is basically a linear diophantine equation you can study more about it just google it so we are given a linear diophantine equation and we have to tell this uh, we are given a and b that is coefficient of x and y and we have to find the their gcd that is d and x and y such that the equation ax plus by is equals to d satisfies so if you take uh, the gcd of 4 and 6 it is 2 and hence mine uh, 4 multiplied with minus 1 so minus 4 plus 6 is equals to 2 which satisfies this equation so we have to print x y and d uh, which satisfies this equations and there are also some constraint or 
what values of x and y we have to print because there are many solution which exist for this equation so we are given certain restrictions on the values of x and y as well so what i want to say is that extended uh, euclidean algorithm is also used to solve linear diophantine equation and also to calculate uh, inverse modulo if of course the inverse modulo exists after studying that we would study about matrix exponentiation matrix exponentiation is basically calculating uh, given a matrix calculate its power to n that is you are given a matrix a suppose and you have to calculate a raised to power n then we use matrix exponentiation which is basically fast exponentiation on matrix after studying that we would be looking at how matrix exponentiation can be used to calculate fibonacci numbers in log n time and important thing is that fibonacci numbers are actually recursive uh, recursively defined or these are recurrence relations so any recurrence relation can be solved using the nth element of any uh, recurrence relation can be found using matrix exponentiation uh, in log n time so just have a look at this problem first of all we would study about matrix exponentiation so you are given t test cases in each that test case you are given two integers n and m and m the size of the matrix and n to the power to which we have to calculate so we are given a two cross two matrix and we have to calculate it power up to three so basically if i call this a matrix a then we have to calculate a raised to power three and since n and m can be very large uh, m the number uh, m cross m that is the matrix size can be a as large as 50 cross 50 and n can be uh, 10 to the power 5 we cannot calculate in it uh, in linear time because matrix multiplication uh, is actually n cube uh, operation so if we have to perform like if you are given n cross n matrix then a single multiplication of two n cross n matrix takes n cube time so if we have to perform 10 to the power 5 multiplication if we are going to solve the problem uh, brute force way then there are 10 to the power 5 multiplication that we have to perform there are 10 test cases and 50 raised to the power 3 operation per multiplication so this would be out of uh, out of time of course and you would receive a tle if you you if you use normal uh, multiplication method so we would study how matrix exponentiation or basically fast matrix exponentiation can be used to calculate higher powers of a matrix in a very fast way like n cube log n time n cube uh, if the matrix size is m then m cube log n time and yeah if you are solving any problem of a uh, spodge or anything then you can simply go into the comment section and there may be people who tell if you do not know what algorithm or something to use then there may be people who actually tell what algorithm you can use to solve this problem and yeah this is the same uh, also this is also a problem which can be solved using matrix exponentiation only now after matrix exponentiation we would be studying chinese reminder theorem and then Euler's torsion function this is one of the most one of my favorite topics though so let me show you the problem that you can solve using uh, Euler's torsion function by the way Euler's torsion function or ETF uh, or ETF of, fun of a number n is equals to the number of integers from 1 to n such that their GCD with n is equals to 1 or basically they are co prime with n so ETF of 6 is equals to 2 because from 1 to 6 there are only two numbers which have gcd 1 with 6 so 1 and 6 are having gcd 1 with 6 is having gcd 1 5 with 6 is having gcd 1 so in range 1 to 6 there are only two numbers 1 and 5 which are having gcd 1 with 6 or 1 and 5 are co prime with number 6 so etf of a number n is equals to number of elements in range 1 to n such that they are co-prime with number n so this is Euler's torsion function and look at the problem this is one of the problem that you can solve using Euler's torsion function and the 
क्वेश्चन इज यू आर गिवन टी टेस्ट केसेस एंड यू आर गिवन ए बी एंड एन सो यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट समीशन i ranges from 1 to n summation j ranges from 1 to n you have to calculate summation of this uh, gcd of a raised to power i minus b raised to pi uh, uh, power i comma a raised to power j minus b raised to power j so we have to solve this problem now this problem is very uh, very special because this this is one of the problem that were uh, asked in acm icpc kolkata regional co contest and as you can see this is the hard problem from code chef so after studying all distortion function in detail we we would be able to solve problems like these after studying all distortion function we would be studying uh, this is relatively easy concept sum of divisors you are given a number n find the sum of the divisors of n and then we would study uh, polar p minus 1 and polar rho algorithm of integer factorization uh, you might thought uh you might think that in part 1 also we had integer factorization and now here as well now polar, uh, polar p minus 1 and rho are different from those algorithm because first these are actually probabilistic function because there are probability that uh these function may not actually factorize the given number they work on probability like 90% or something and these are the algorithm that we know which are 100% sure that they would factorize the given number uh, the best algorithm can be used to factorize number n in square root of n time but polar p minus 1 and polar row algorithm are much faster than that because just look at this question now this question asks you to find the integer factorization of the given numbers so as you can see the second last number this number has prime factorization this now the input can contain integers which are having as large as 20 digits now if you take uh, if there are 20 digits which means the number is 10 power 20 up to 10 power 20 now if you take the square root of it it is 10 power 10 so if we use the traditional method to factorize the numbers then uh, we have to run a loop till 10 power 10 and which would result of course in TLE so we can't solve the, this problem in uh, using the traditional method so we have to study polar row algorithm or and polar p minus 1 algorithm to factorize the numbers and uh, same goes for this as you can see there in this problem the question is same you, you are given an integer and you have to find the prime factorization of that number but now the digits uh, that is the input number can be as large as 10 to the power 30 if you take its square root it is 10 to the power 50 15 sorry so you cannot even imagine to run a loop from 1 to 10 to the power 15 to find the factorization of the given number of course to solve those problems we need some algorithm integer factorization method which are way faster and polar p minus 1 and rho are exactly the same so these are the algorithm that we would be studying in the whole course it would be a long one of course so bear with me till the end of this series so thank you guys for watching and yep keep coding thank you